Over 20 years ago, when Mini decided to return to North American shores with the all-new Cooper, it instantly won the hearts of many American fans because it had all of the same character of the original Mini Cooper that left the U.S. all those years ago. Now, of course, with the industry continuing to move toward electrification, Mini cannot escape that fate either, which is why I'm standing by this 2023 Mini Cooper SE. Technically, the company introduced this car back in 2020, but they have made some changes to the vehicle since then, which is why we are testing one out for a full week so we can put it through our usual battery of tests. But the big question I want answered at the end of this video, has Mini continued to capture all of the charm and charisma of the gas versions in the electric model? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the styling of the 2023 Mini Cooper Electric, let me go ahead and pop the hood because the million dollar question with a lot of EVs, does it have a frunk? And as you can see, the Mini begins life as an internal combustion vehicle, so it does not have a frunk. Instead, we have a single electric motor powering the front wheels. Now, underneath this big plastic shroud, you're going to find one electric motor, like I said, that gives this vehicle front wheel drive. It's essentially a motor that was taken out of the uh, old BMW i3. The number is pretty impressive in terms of power for just one electric motor, 181 horsepower and 199 pound feet of torque. Those output figures basically match the gas powered Mini Cooper S, which is why this is called the Mini Cooper S E, the E being it stands for electric. And this vehicle also has a 32.6 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that lines the floor. Uh, that essentially will give it up to 114 miles of EV only range. It all goes out through a one speed reduction gear transmission. Uh, and Mini says that this vehicle uh, should get to 60 in around 6.9 seconds. We'll test it out with our equipment. And this vehicle has a top speed of around 190, or I'm sorry, just 93 miles an hour, not 193 miles an hour. So just under 100 miles an hour, that's technically govern limited. Uh, and compared to the gas powered Mini, this is about 200 pounds heavier, but it's still among the lightest ever for an electric vehicle at just over 3,200 pounds. But let's go ahead and close the hood, which I love, by the way, how the headlights stay in place and it goes kind of over the hood. Now, unlike the 2020 model that I showed you guys last time for the Cooper SE, uh, Mini gave this car the updated front fascia a couple years ago that they introduced on the gas powered Mini. You can see the signature circular bug eye headlights are uh, apparent. I don't like, however, how there's still this fake hood scoop here because, again, this is not an internal combustion vehicle. We have the updated front end with the larger grill with this kind of bar that is now body color that was introduced on the pre on the uh, refresh model. You can see full LED headlights are standard on all the Cooper SEs. I like the halo LED daytime running light and turn signal LED low and high beams. No fog lights on this vehicle. You do have some functional air vents there that allow air to pass through along with more functional vents at the front. Uh, which again, not really necessary for this vehicle. You can't really tell from this angle that this is the electric model. There's just a yellow S badge here that's gonna let you know that this is the electric version. Now looking around the side profile, you can see the Cooper SE only comes as the hatchback two door. Mini also makes a four door. They also make a convertible. Sadly, you can't get the electric version in any of those other body styles. They only offer it in this. There are rumors of them offering a convertible version of this, but that has not been confirmed by Mini uh, just yet. Now, looking at the overall proportions at the side, this is among the smallest vehicles that you can buy at 151.7 inches long. It's about an inch shorter than the gas model, surprisingly. I wasn't expecting that. It has like a 98 inch long wheelbase. And then Minis offer several different choices of wheels. The base wheel is a 16 inch wheel. This is the 17 inch sparkle, sparkle silver tentacle wheel, not my favorite in terms of a wheel design. Uh, they also offer a black finish on it and other different black wheels. You can also see there are um, these unpainted wheel arches over there uh, along with the unpainted side skirt. You have an S badge over here with an LED daytime or LED turn signal over here. Yellow painted side mirrors, which goes really nicely with the yellow cloth and leather red seats. You can see my tester also has a black roof, which you can also get a white roof or a multicolored roof. It also has an opening panoramic glass sunroof as well, which is nice. Some more chrome along the belt line. And overall, this car is certainly distinctive. I just think this particular spec doesn't speak to me. I would probably get this car in British racing green with black wheels and a black roof. Just make it look a little bit more uh, aggressive, a little bit more masculine. The rear, I never really warmed up to the rear end styling of this third generation Cooper when it came out in 2013. It's just got these huge tail lights. I don't like how big they are. They are an LED design. You can see the British flag is kind of incorporated in the actual tail light modules with more chrome. Uh, and then you can see here, this is a, the electric badge along with the yellow uh, Cooper S badge. 
Uh, and then obviously being the electric model, there's no visible exhaust tips. You're not gonna need that when you have an all electric vehicle. Now opening up the trunk area, the two door is very small in terms of the cargo space. You only get around 8.7 cubic feet of space. You can see it probably just has enough room for my 21 inch roller bag and a backpack. Underneath here, however, there is a pretty deep underfloor storage area. You can see these are the chargers and the box for the Cooper SE. That's actually a fix a flat kit. Uh, you can see it has a BMW logo on it uh, because this vehicle does not have a temporary spare tire. If you fold down the seats, which by the way, you can do that pretty quickly, it's not a completely flat floor, but you do expand it out to around 32 cubic feet of space. So that's much more usable, but then that, that makes this car just a two seater vehicle as opposed to a five seater vehicle. Moving on to the interior of the 2023 Mini Cooper SE. Let me first show you guys the key fob for the vehicle. As you can see, uh, Mini has its own unique fob to other BMW products. You can tell the buttons come from the BMW family, uh, but you used to have to insert this key into the ignition. You no longer have to do that because it has their smart key access system. You can see there's a lock, unlock, open up the trunk button, and there's a panic button somewhere, although I can't seem to find the panic button right now. Uh, just by looking at this key. I don't know if Mini offers a phone as a key feature just yet. That is a newer technology that BMW vehicles have, but Mini, I don't think, has that feature just yet. But as you open the door, you can see the two-door variant uh, has this really cool interior color combination, or at least my particular tester does. It kind of has like a two-tone combination of a leatherette with this really interesting kind of plaid-like material where it's fabric. Uh, these seats are uh, three-level heated, uh, which is still very nice. They are manually adjusting seats, so no memory seating or anything like that. I don't think Mini offers a power seat, if I remember correctly, so that's something to kind of keep in mind. Remember, this is supposed to be a small, more economy-style car, but it has just a lot more character versus uh, some other types of vehicles. You can see the door panel here has pretty decent materials. It's a soft touch injection molded plastic, a lot of piano black plastic trim. My tester also has the Harman Kardon stereo, which is definitely nice sounding. And then you have a padded armrest over here, window controls, chrome plated, and they're one touch automatic up down for both windows, which is definitely nice. You have a little bit of storage along with hard touch panels over there. Now stepping inside, this vehicle has about five inches of ground clearance. So it has a lower step in height. And as I get in and shut the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk, so that actually uh, aids to that impression of quality with this vehicle. Uh, but when you want to start it up, you can see Mini puts the button right here, or it's technically a toggle. You have to put your foot on brake and then just kind of push that down. And then Mini has a really interesting startup chime in this vehicle that's unique than the uh, versus the gas-powered models. It almost tries to make it seem more like a spaceship. Uh, which is kind of going with the theme of the electric model. You can see the dashboard layout is pretty familiar with the gas-powered Mini. I really am looking forward to Mini doing away with this more traditional look for the layout. It kind of um, really just hampers them in terms of technology. You have uh, a, a reskinned version of BMW's iDrive here. I think they just call it Mini Connect. It's an 8.8-inch display here. You can see my phone paired up pretty quick. It's got wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, I believe. Um, and then the materials here at the upper dashboard is a soft touch injection molded plastic. You have this really cool looking texture. This is the electric trim. It's plastic, but it has like this weird texture to it to try, that I guess makes it feel electric. Uh, there's also a heads up display that flips up. I don't like how it's the flip up style. I prefer it to be just projected into the windshield. It kind of just takes away from the heads up display. It's a little distracting for me. Um, the steering wheel you can see is a manual tilt and telescoping. You do have pretty good adjustability and range. The horn. Oh, wow, it actually sounds really mean considering how tiny this car is. Like, the horn in the Toyota Supra sounds pathetic, but that actually <laughs> sounds pretty good. It literally screams, F you, I'm a small car, get out of my way. Uh, anyways, you can see this center display um, used to be the tachometer. As you can see, Mini went away with that. Uh, or the speedometer and tachometer. They've made it, done away with that and they put a digital display over here. It's starting to look a little bit dated, but it's nice that they give you one that's front and center uh, in the instrument panel. So now this just basically has your hazard switch and the 8.8 inch screen. You have a volume knob here. You can also adjust your radio sources. There's the mini display here, which also includes embedded GPS, um, which the GPS is fine. Again, it kind of reminds me of a BMW. Uh, this is the same interface. You also have the Mini Connect controller here, which you can use if you don't want to touch the screen. But again, the touch screen works well. In terms of storage, this vehicle is lacking a little bit on that. Um, you can see there's a place where you can uh, store a few things like your sunglasses. You have a USB-A charging port, cup holders here, a few more buttons here for the dual zone climate control. I mentioned earlier, three level heated seats, parking sensors. This is for adjusting the regen brake. You have your choice between low or high regenerative braking. And then you can also turn off the stability control. Your drive mode selector, you can see there's a sport mode, 
uh, which shows you a graphical there, a graphic there, and then there's a balance setting, a green, and then a green plus. That's gonna give you the most range, but it's also going to sacrifice acceleration and the air conditioning if you put it in the green plus. This uh, electronic shifter controls the one speed reduction gear transmission. You can see you put it in reverse. It has a backup camera, um, and it also has automatic parallel parking functions, I believe. Uh, I have, somebody has turned off the trajectory, it looks like. There we go. So there's the trajectory. It's active trajectory. Um, so the camera quality and resolution is perfectly fine. Uh, it, I just wish it took up the entire screen. You can see it also has parking sensors, electronic parking brake, and then over here, padded center console, which has actually some storage in there, which is nice. You can also lift this up. You can see my phone fits in there, but there's no wireless phone charging pad in this car. I don't know if you can get it as an accessory. Uh, that flips up. You can also kind of adjust that. Uh, the seats, uh, they do they are a little constrict or confining. Um, you can't adjust the bolsters, but I like this kind of two-tone cloth material. There's also a pretty noticeable thigh extender uh, on both front seats, which is nice. Manual seat as well on the passenger side. Uh, the seats definitely look cool. The glove box you can see is uh, damped, but not lined with felt. It's actually a pretty decent sized glove box. Uh, and then over here, you can see there are some controls for the uh, map lighting. And then you can also open up the sunroof where you can tilt it or you can open it up completely. I love how many gives you that because it just kind of adds to the open and airiness of this cabin. That's the biggest that it's going to open. But again, very nice how they give you an opening sunroof uh, to kind of give the cabin more, even more space. There's also a sunshade here, although this still lets in light uh, when you have it closed. But overall, the interior definitely feels on the smaller end. The dash is also kind of far away from you. Uh, but in terms of materials quality, I think it's perfectly acceptable considering the price of this particular model. However, there are some minis that can go closer to $50,000. That's too expensive, but I think in the mid $30,000 range, this interior is perfectly fine. So let me go ahead and show you guys the back seat because there is a back seat back here. Uh, and to get back here, you have to basically, on both sides, you can pull this lever that's going to manually move the seat forward, which is technically an easier way versus a power seat. Now, um, I'm not very tall, guys. I'm five foot seven. So let me go ahead and entertain you all by showing you what the space is like back here. Now, first of all, um, this seat, when you pull it back, it actually doesn't come back. So as you can see there, the front passenger doesn't have a lot of room. This is my driving position. So this is where I'd have the seat to drive. As you can see, there is the leg room. Here's the leg room when this seat doesn't come back, uh, which this is perfectly acceptable for me. But if I was going to come over here and show you guys what it's like to sit behind myself. Whew. OK, so I can get my feet underneath the seat because there's a decent amount of foot space. My knees are not touching, but my shins are touching the back of the seat. So this is nice and padded. You have two storage pockets, an armrest here, an armrest here, and then lots of hard touch materials. I do like how there's a sunroof back here. Uh, which is definitely nice. And then if you look over here, you can see I'm five foot seven, so I have a decent amount of headroom. But uh, for those of you who are over six feet tall, it's, it's not gonna be a comfortable place. You can close this as well, uh, which is nice. This is all hard touch materials. You cannot fit three across. So I'm sorry, this only seats four. I think I mentioned earlier, it actually seats five. It only seats four. But overall, for kids or somebody under five foot eight, like my height, or under five foot nine, you can sit back here in a pinch, but uh, you might wanna go for the four door. Uh, or the Countryman if you need more space. So we are back in the all-electric Mini Cooper SE. The last time I had a chance to drive this vehicle, I was out on the media drive for it almost three years ago, because 2020 was when this car first came out. And the SE is basically designed to be the electric version of the Cooper S. I mean, we have a single electric motor at the front, a 32 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, 181 horsepower, so slightly less horsepower and slightly less torque versus the gas version. But Mini says this will do zero to 60 in around 6.9 seconds. I never actually got a chance to test this car uh, when I first drove it, but now that we have our equipment, we have it back home, uh, let's go ahead and see what we can actually get. Now make sure it's in sport mode, which you just flick this little toggle up, put it into sport traction as well, uh, because this is a front wheel drive car. I don't want it to cut power. Let's see what we can get. Actually, no drama there, even with the traction control off, I was surprised. Wow, 6.05 seconds. That's actually pretty fast. I wasn't expecting it to be almost a second faster than what Mini claims. Now, granted, the uh, Germans, although this is technically a British brand, but it's owned by BMW, as you guys know, tend to be conservative. But six seconds is plenty quick for something like this. And even though this is car is only front wheel drive, it puts the power down really well. Um, it doesn't really have launch control. I tried brake charging there, but it doesn't really do anything. Uh, the regen braking in this car is either a low or a high. I have it in high setting now, and I really like the what regen braking. It feels like it's almost like a one-pedal drive effect. Um, so it's nice that they do you know, include 
uh, that uh, ability to do either a low or a high regen. I think it's just important for people to have that kind of uh, ability to kind of choose. Flooring it from a stop there without brake torquing it. 6.38, and this is with it going slightly uphill. So, again, pretty solid performance, and I wasn't expecting it to be this much quicker than versus what Minis claim. So, I have no complaints with the acceleration. I suspect this car is actually quicker versus its gas counterpart. Even if you guys go for the uh, automatic version of that, the dual clutch, the automatic or the electric mini just is going to be quick off the line because it's got one gear it has no delays in terms of the transmission shifting or the turbo spooling up just put your foot down in there there it actually spun out the tires a little bit there oh, that's pretty fun i like this car a lot i mean what's cool about the kate cooper electrics this thing really just keeps the kind of fun go-kart nature of the Mini, but it almost makes it feel like you're driving a go-kart, an electric go-kart or an electric golf cart, uh, because this vehicle is just so playful. The suspension is really well uh, sorted for handling. Uh, the 17-inch wheels on my tester, not my favorite design, but uh, they surprisingly have good grip for a car like this. The weight of the Cooper SE, this is about 200-ish pounds heavier than the gas version. I don't really feel it, the weight, to be honest. It still feels like a really light car. I mean, this is one of the lightest electric vehicles you can buy at 3,200 pounds, and it just feels so alive. I love how the steering talks to you. I like how the chassis just is very neutral. You don't feel like you're going to get into trouble with this car. It just feels like a point and uh, shoot kind of little hatch. <laughs> a little bit of torque steer there with the traction control off, just putting my foot down. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really liked this car when I first drove it three years ago, but um, it's a fun little urban runabout type of vehicle. I mean, really the, sh the most disappointing aspect about the Mini Cooper SE is the range. I mean, 114 miles is what Mini claims. And in my weeks worth of testing, I only saw around 110 miles on a full charge. Um, that is perfectly acceptable if you guys live in an urban environment. However, as you can see from where I'm at here in the country part of Pennsylvania, um, this kind of range is perfectly fine for around town. But as soon as I want to take like a longer trip to go, for example, the closest airport for me is about 70 miles away. I could get there on a full charge, but when I get there, I'm going to have to plug it in. Uh, otherwise, when I leave the airport to come back, I'll have to find a charging spot or a charging station to plug in at. And this is accepting a maximum of 50 kilowatts. So it's on the slower end, but uh, in terms of range, I think for the next generation, Mini should consider doubling the range. I mean, 200 miles is the more acceptable range, especially for an EV, even in this size category EV, and this is certainly a unique vehicle. But I think the next generation should have at least 200 miles of range. I would love to see Mini offer all-wheel drive, although they've never done an all-wheel drive gas version. So I suspect the Cooper will continue to be front-wheel drive only. Uh, but in terms of refinement, we'll switch the drive mode here, just go into mid. There's like a green mode also that'll increase the range. We'll also turn the traction control back on. Um, in terms of daily driving the Cooper SE, this actually rides better than the regular Mini. It's because of the battery pack that's kind of pushing down on the car. It feels really planted. It's also really quiet. I mean, the four-cylinder turbo and the Minis, they sound okay. They're not wonderful sounding. They sound a little augmented as well. So this kind of gets rid of that. You go with all a completely quiet driving experience, which is kind of nice. Visibility is excellent. You can see out of the fronts, the sides, the back. Remember, you're driving a car that's 151 inches long. This is among the smallest new vehicles you can buy. A Miata is bigger than this vehicle, which is insane. Uh, and in terms of driver assistance tech, this car does have automatic emergency braking. It's got lane, um, lane change assist, I believe. Uh, or lane keeping assist, but it doesn't have adaptive cruise control. Mini does not offer adaptive cruise control, which might actually be the right decision because this is not something that I would take on longer trips anyway, so you're not even gonna miss the adaptive cruise. It would be nice, again, if they offer it, but if they're going to offer that feature, they need to double, double the range of this car. Uh, and in terms of the tech, the wireless CarPlay is nice. This is essentially a, uh, a reskinned version of BMW's old iDrive 7. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the next generation where Mini kind of does away with this dashboard design uh, the steering feels nice in your hands. It has good feedback. The heads-up display in this car, uh, while it is nice, I don't like that screen that flips up. It just kind of makes the whole experience look a little cheap. But overall, still love this car a lot. I really would love to see Mini do a convertible version of this car before they decide to do, do away and go to the next generation. 
There's rumors of it, but no confirmation yet for Mini. But overall, still a great electric kind of go-kart-like machine, but it is no longer, sadly, the cheapest new electric EV that you can buy in the US. So after spending a full week with the all-electric Mini Cooper SE, I can comfortably say that Mini continues to capture all of the charm and charisma from the gas model. Of course, you are missing the snarl that you get from the exhaust and the burbles you get from the uh, dual-clutch transmission in the regular S. However, what you do get is a car that's uh, way more efficient, uh, that's actually a little bit quicker, uh, that is a lot cheaper to run because as you guys know, electricity is cheap, especially if you have it uh, plugged in at your home. And even though the range is not great, 110 miles in my real world testing, I think it's terrible if you guys plan to use this as your only vehicle. As a second car where you can drive it around town and you like small vehicles, it makes perfect sense. Uh, and I think that's partly the reason of the Mini Cooper SE. I do hope that Mini decides to offer it as a convertible because the convertible aspect just makes this car even more fun. Uh, so before they, set, they decide to introduce the new generation, which they are working on, it would be nice to see them offer it as a convertible. Uh, in terms of the pricing, uh, if you guys are looking to buy this vehicle, it starts at around $34,000. It's around $2,000 more expensive versus a standard Mini Cooper S. Now, $2,000 more is actually kind of a steal, and that was kind of the charm of the Cooper SE when it first came out. Is it was one of the most affordable EVs on the market. However, because of the Inflation Reduction Act, this vehicle is built in the UK, so it no longer qualifies for the $7,500 federal tax credit. So my tester here is a little over $35,000, with basically the $900 driver assistance package that still lacks adaptive cruise control. So you're gonna be paying that price essentially and you no longer get the federal tax credit. So the cheapest EV is no longer this vehicle. You're gonna to have to buy and wait for like a Chevrolet Bolt. That will be the cheapest EV. However, at $2,000 more expensive versus the gas powered Mini, I'd say that this is still uh, worth a look as long as you guys are okay with the 110 mile real world range. That's something that you're gonna to have to get used to and be sure to remember to plug it in frequently, but if you're using it as a second car, that shouldn't be a problem. But for the next generation, I would like to see Mini essentially double the range for this vehicle. Well, with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Mini Cooper SE. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.